In this presentation, we are going to discuss one example based on Mason's gain rule. So, let's get started. Find the transfer function of the system whose block diagram is shown below. One block diagram is given to us and we need to find out the transfer function. If you observe this block diagram, we are having two summing points. There are three blocks G1, G2, G3 in the forward path. There is a takeoff point in the output of the block G2 having gain H1 which is connected to this summing point. There is one more takeoff point which is connected with the output of block G3 having gain H2 which is connected to this summing point with a negative sign. The reference input is R and the final output is C. This is the same example that we discussed in block diagram reduction. And there we calculated the transfer function by the use of block diagram reduction rules. But in this lecture, we will calculate the transfer function by the use of signal flow graph. So moving on to the solution, firstly we will convert this block diagram into its equivalent SFG. And for that sake, we will firstly draw a forward path from the input node to the output node. And then we will draw the nodes which are present between these two nodes. So if you observe this block diagram, the first node after the input node will be this summing point. Let us call this node as node A. After this, the second node will be this summing point. Let us call this node as node B. Now the third node will be this takeoff point. Let us call this node as node C. And the fourth node will be this takeoff point. Let us call this node as node D. Now. Let us create a forward path between the input node and the output node. And now, the first node is node A, which is this summing point. The second node is node B, which is this summing point. The third node is node C, which is this takeoff point. And the fourth node is node D, which is this takeoff point. The input node is R, from which the signal is going out of this node. Now, if you observe this block diagram, there is a block of gain G1 which is connected between node A and node B. So, there will be a branch of gain G1 which will be connected between node A and node B in this signal flow graph. Because we know that a block of gain G1 in the block diagrams is a branch of gain G1 in the signal flow graph. Similarly, there is a block of gain G2 which is connected between node B and node C. So, there will be a branch of gain G2 which will be connected between node B and node C. Now, a block of gain G3 is connected between node C and node D and that's why a branch of gain G3 will be connected between node C and node D. And this signal will move to the output node. Now, if you observe the block diagram, there is a takeoff point between node C and node A having gain H1 with a negative sign. And that's why there will be a branch of gain minus H1 which will be connected between node C and node A. Similarly, there is a takeoff point of gain H2 which is connected between node D and node B with a negative sign. And that's why in the signal flow graph, there will be a branch of gain minus H2 which will be connected between node D and node B. In this way, we have converted this block diagram into its equivalent SFG. Now, we have to apply the Mason's gain rule in order to find out the overall transfer function. So, the first step is to check the forward path. If you observe this signal flow graph, there is only one forward path which is R, A, B, C, D, C. This is the forward path and now we will calculate the forward path gain which is the product of branch gains which encounter in traversing a forward path. So in this case, the forward path gain will be 1 multiplied with G1, multiplied with G2, multiplied with G3, multiplied with 1. So the forward path gain will be G1, G2, G3. Now we will check the individual loops in this signal flow graph. So if you observe this signal flow graph, we can see that there are two individual loops the first loop is A, B, C, A and the second individual loop is B, C, D, B. So we can say that there are two individual loops and now we will calculate the loop gains. So the first loop is L1 which is A, B, C, 
A. And if we want to calculate the loop gain, we need to multiply the branch gains of these three branches. So it will be G1 multiplied with G2 multiplied with minus H1. So the loop gain of this loop will be minus of G1 multiplied with G2 multiplied with H1. Similarly, the second loop is L2 which is B, C, D, B. And if we want to calculate the loop gain of this loop, we need to multiply the gains of these three branches. So the loop gain will be G2 multiplied with G3 multiplied with minus H2 and it will be equal to minus G2 G3 H2. Now what is the number of non-touching loops in this SFG? Yes, there are no non-touching loops. There are two loops in this SFG, A, B, C, A and the second loop is B, C, D, B. And we can see that these two nodes B, C are common in these two loops and that's why they are touching loops. They are not non-touching loops. So we can say that the number of non-touching loops in this signal flow graph is equal to zero. So now we are done with the calculation of forward path gain and the loop gain. We will now calculate the determinant of this signal flow graph. Moving on to the calculation of determinant of SFG, we know that the value of delta is equal to 1 minus sum of the individual loop gains minus sum of product of gains of all possible combinations of two non-touching loops and so on. But in this signal flow graph, the number of non-touching loops is equal to zero. And that's why the gains of non-touching loops will be equal to zero. So we will have the value of delta for this SFG equal to 1 minus sum of individual loop gains. Now, if we put the values of loop gains, we will have the value of delta equal to 1 minus of minus G1, G2, H1 minus G2, G3, H2. The value of loop gain L1 is minus G1, G2, H1 and the value of loop gain L2 is minus G2, G3, H2. Now, if you open the bracket, we will have the value of delta equal to 1 plus G1, G2, H1 plus G2, G3, H2. So now we are done with the calculation of determinant of SFG. We will now move on to the calculation of associated path factor. And we know that if we want to calculate the associated path factor, we need to erase the forward path. In the given signal flow graph, there is only one forward path and if we erase that path, the number of isolated loops will be equal to zero. Because if we erase the forward path, both the loops L1 and L2 will get destroyed and there will not be any isolated loop. And that's why the value of delta 1 will be equal to 1 minus of 0. This factor has become 0 because the gain of isolated loops is equal to 0 because the number of isolated loops is equal to 0. And that's why the value of associated path factor delta 1 is equal to 1. Now we have calculated the forward path gain, the loop gain, the determinant of SFG and the associated path factor. We will now apply the Mason's gain formula in order to calculate the overall transfer function. So we have CS over RS which is the transfer function equal to summation from K equal to 1 to N P sub K multiplied with del K over delta. In this signal flow graph there is only one forward path and that's why the value of N will be equal to 1. So we have the formula CS over RS equal to P1 multiplied with del 1 over delta. If we substitute all these values we will have C over R equal to G1, G2, G3 over 1 plus G1, G2, H1 plus G2, G3, H2. And this is the overall transfer function of the given block diagram. And we have calculated this by the use of signal flow graph. In this way, we can calculate the transfer function of any block diagram by the use of Mason's gain rule. We will discuss some more examples based on Mason's gain rule in the upcoming lectures. As of now, we are done with this lecture. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this one here. See you in the next lecture.